Hello and welcome to OK Let's Talk. Hashtag Blood Matters. Now, the word we're going to be dealing with today is something we hear quite often, and it is not commission of inquiry, but donor. D O N O R. And according to the dictionary, it says that a donor is someone who gives willingly without expecting anything in return, despite other children saying that they should receive at least 150 bucks for donating. Now, today I'm joined by Antoinette Porter, who is a zone donor manager from Sandbus, who's going to help us unpack fact from fiction. Antoinette, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Lilama, for having me. And I prefer to be called Debbie, hey? Oh, well, there's <laughs> always Debbie there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Debbie, um, according to our legislation, it says that the donors uh, are voluntary and that that means you don't get paid to save lives. So before we get to that, wh why, why, why is that? Maybe just want to unpack that for us. Certainly. So basically, remember, Sandbus's purpose really is that we are trusted to save lives, right? And when you unpack that, it means that the patient that's going to receive this blood, that they're trusting us that we're going to give them a safe unit of blood. But furthermore, if you look into it and you're unpacking it, the World Health Organization also recommends that the donors are none, uh, they voluntary, we don't remunerate them. And when we do this, it basically equates to a safer unit of blood. Because remember, one of the things is when you think of safety and blood, we rely on the donor, to be honest. So if we are going to now be paying donors for their donation, we can't guarantee the honesty. Because then they are probably not going to be doing it for the right reasons. Sure. So Debbie, now I'm excited to become a donor and um, I'm amped and I've seen it's about saving lives and, and, I, and I understand the, the vision and the altruistic purpose behind it. What are the criteria that I need to overcome before I'm able to, to donate blood? Okay, so basically there's just five criteria that will get you through the door that our staff are going to ask you. One of them is the age requirement. If you're a first-time donor, you need to be between the ages of 16 to 75. If you've donated blood before, and this is not your first time, then we need there to be an interval, and we call it a donation interval, which is 56 days. In addition to that, if you're going to donate whole blood, we need you to weigh 50 kgs and above. But if you're donating platelets, that weight requirement is a little higher, and it sits at 55 uh, kgs. In addition to that, we want you to be able to be healthy on the day of donation because we don't want this donation to adversely affect your health. But most importantly, remember I spoke about the safe units of blood. Mm. We need you to be leading a safe lifestyle sure. that's risk-free. So once you meet that criteria, we will call you into the donor center and follow the different processes, but we further assess eligibility during the one-on-one, -on -one, and there we will ask you if you have eaten in the last four hours. In addition to that, part of it involves us checking your hemoglobin, which um, we do a finger prick, we do your blood pressure, we check your pulse, and we're just making sure that you, as a donor, are fit and healthy to actually go ahead and give do that blood donation. Um, so, just uh, a question on the eating part. If if it just happens that you maybe haven't eaten and you don't disclose that or, or someone lies about maybe be, uh, about eating because they're scared that they might get turned back, um, what are the consequences of not saying that I've not eaten in the last four hours? We really need our donors to be honest, right? And that honesty is not just for the recipient protection, which is the person that's getting the blood, but it's also about protecting our donor. Sure. So the reason why we need you to eat is because you might, if you haven't eaten, it increases the risk or the chances of you getting a donor adverse event, like a faint. And that will leave a impression on your mind about blood donation. And we don't want that. We want your experience of blood donation to be as comfortable as possible with as little risk to you as possible. Absolutely. And also my understanding is that not everyone qualifies to to donate blood. So what are those deal breakers that can stop someone from being eligible 
Because Put it donate up. blood. Correct. Okay. So the deal breakers really, and again, I'm going to keep talking about the safety because of the recipients that's getting the blood. We need to make sure that our blood is free from any infection. So you cannot donate blood if you are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. You cannot donate blood if you're taking any um, IV drugs. In addition to that, you wouldn't be able to take uh, donate blood if you have more than one sexual partner or if you are a person that uh, receives money, goods or favors in exchange for um, sexual favors, you would not be able to donate blood. And it all boils down to, the, to really the safety of our blood supply. So if you are practicing polygamy, you're out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite interesting. Because that's uh, then it's multiple sexual partners. Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in terms of our our people, our recipient, because we hear a lot about our donors, um, we're not donating to vampires, are we? No, we're not donating to uh, vampires, contrary to popular belief. So really our recipients, ladies in labor, Mm -hmm. uh, there's many complications with childbirth mm -hmm. that might require blood, but also our preterm infants as well that we give a, quite a bit of blood to. It's our patients with cancer. Um, it's our patients with anemia. Sure. People that have had road accidents and also those with burns. So those are some of the most common reasons that we issue the the, the conditions that utilize the blood. But obviously, it's not limited to that. Okay. And then you, you also hear a lot about compatibility and and not the dating type. Um, but, but, but from what I hear is that um, it's important to match your, your like for like, but it, it's not only restricted to if you're an O, you, you get a straight O. What, what are the, the considerations that goes behind that? Okay. So, you know, with, with the dating apps, right, you need to be someone's type. <laughs> But yeah, in Sandbus, it's, it's great because you're everybody's type, okay? But let's just break it down. There is an aspect of compatibility. So we base it, there, there's four different blood groups. Okay. So it's from the AB blood group, ABO. So it's group A, group B, group AB, as well as group O. But then it goes even deeper than that because then now you have the RH factor. And the RH factor can be either... RH negative or RH positive. But it gets quite interesting because we have what's called a universal donor. And this really is an exceptional donor because they are blood and it's it includes, it's just the O negative. So if you are O negative, you are termed a universal donor. And it means that your units of blood can be given to anybody regardless of the their blood group. So there will be no compatibility, compatibility issues. Are you all negative? Well, it depends on the day. Oh, okay. So you're not everybody's type. Sometimes I'm AB. Oh, okay. On, sorry. <laughs> Especially on Thursday. <laughs> so I'm glad you spoke about AB because now with AB, that's the universal recipient. So it means that you can literally receive blood from anybody. So there's no in an emergency, et cetera. Let's say there's an accident and it's, it's really touch and go now. Mm -hmm. And there's no time to do a cross match. You can receive blood from anybody. Do you understand? So, so basically the, the O negative, they're the blessers of, of the... Well, if you want to put it like that, they certainly the blessers. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> And 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 then maybe just take us through what what actually happens when you when you donate blood. Okay, so you have the option of donating blood either at our donor uh, fixed donor sites okay. or at our mobile collection sites, okay. right? So when you come through to the door, uh, you basically will complete this electronic questionnaire where you answer about your lifestyle, your health, etc. And once you have completed that, then you go into a private space where you're having a conversation with a registered nurse or uh, one of Sanders' trained staff. And during that conversation, confidentiality is guaranteed because they're going to ask you some uncomfortable questions mm. about your health, about your lifestyle. But over and above that, they do some uh, tests, like I spoke about your HB. Mm. They're checking if your HB is fine, if your blood pressure is fine, if your pulse is fine, and that really you meet all the criteria and that the process of donation is not going to impact on your 
help. So even within donations itself, um, quite often we hear about deferral or uh, being told to a donor that uh, the donor has been deferred. What, what does that mean? Okay, so in simple terms, it's just a very fancy word. Not today, my friend. Mm -hmm. So we're glad that you came and you tried to donate a unit of blood. But unfortunately, for reasons, certain reasons like something that could impact your health, like possibly your blood pressure is a little bit low, your pulse is a bit, a bit high, your HP is a bit low, etc. We're going to tell you, not today. But that doesn't mean that you mustn't come back. We're going to give you a date. We're going to give you some health education as well, how to fix that problem. And we're going to say to you, please come back on that day. So we hope that you're going to be back when we tell you to come back. All right. But that, that, that is good because I would think as a first-time donor and you're being deferred, you, you might feel embarrassed or you might feel like maybe there's something wrong with me and I'm not coming back to this place. So it's actually quite good that mm. people are being encouraged to come back and you actually give a set date to say, this. not just not today, yeah. um, but, but please do return. Do not ghost us. Absolutely. Please don't <laughs> ghost us. We're begging you. <laughs> So as much as 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 as, as um, we say donating is safe, um, what what are some of the side effects that could be adverse or negative that you've seen patients go through? Okay. Or donors. Uh, yeah. So donors. So donation really uh, donation adverse events they happen, but it must be noted they're extremely rare. The most common type of adverse events that we experience in our donor population. Um, is stuff that's related to the insertion of the actual needle. So it's localized to the points of needle entry. So for an example, one of them at the top of my head is like a hematoma. So that means that when we put the needle into your arm, uh, the blood basically leaks out into the tissue and it causes a bit of swelling, a bit Kitchen. of bruising, yes, okay. into the tissue. So it, it swells, right? Okay. So it causes some swelling, a bit of purplish discoloration, some sorts of sensitivity at the site, like pain. But that doesn't last forever. Okay. It will subside in a couple of days. We encourage you to keep your uh, bandage on. Mm -hmm. And if it's still, it doesn't subside, you're more than welcome to call us so that we can treat it further if the need arises. And have we had an, an episode where the subs uh, the, the 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 bruise subsided slowly it could be maybe due to um, health reason there are instances that it would take longer remember no two people are the same okay, okay. so oh, you might heal a bit quicker than i would and it could simply be that you i i go to the gym mm -hmm. okay so i'm i'm not resting my arm mm. and you are couch potato and you're resting your arms so i was going to heal a bit quicker, oh, yes. but it does. It doesn't, it's not going to stay there for the rest of your life. It's almost like if you think of it like a bruise, yes. you're running on the road, you fall. you fall down, there's a bit of bleeding into your tissue, mm. it swells, it seems very traumatic at the time, and it is, but it goes down after a while. Sure. Okay. Sure. So so even if you, you, you do get bruising or or an adverse event, another one that has come up is, is, is fainting. What, what causes uh, fainting? So fainting, another term, it's, it's, it's actually called a vasovagus, vasovagal reaction. So in instances like this, and it's, it's really a scary experience for a donor, mm -hmm. but the good thing about it, it doesn't last long, okay? Um, usually what happens is your blood pressure drops, your pulse will increase, you might experience, might or might not, loss of consciousness for a short period of time. You might also have some nausea, some dizziness, so vomiting but i want you to rest assured that we have trained staff we've got registered nurses in fact all our staff are trained and competent to manage those type of adverse events thank you for those and i think it's it's quite informative and, and useful so i'm just going to ask you a couple of quick questions can i choose who gets my blood unfortunately nope it's a big nope Remember, blood is given where it's needed the most. And also, we spoke about compatibility as well. So there's those aspects. So no, the answer is no, 
you cannot choose who gets your blood. And do blood donors receive priority when they need to get blood themselves? Uh, again, that's a nope. And I'm saying it with a smile on my face. <laughs> because, look, again, it's about who needs it the most and the priority, the compatibility. However, by you contributing to this, um, uh, by donating, you're ensuring that whoever needs it gets it when they need it and that whoever might someday be you as well. Yes. So we do encourage you to continue donating. So if I can recap on Tonette or Debbie. As you yeah. Said. So a donor someone who gives life for free and it's voluntary and yep. that is a best practice. And then we also said that you need to be eligible. So there's a few tests that you might need to go through. And also that um, the, the different blood products have got different purposes. And lastly, blood type does matter. Absolutely. Um, even though... <laughs> you everyone's type yes. <laughs> on a Monday when yes. you're all negative. So yeah. the process is simple um, and you should not be too worried about those small adverse events such as bruising and perhaps fainting. Absolutely. Any last words from you to perhaps our donors or our potential donors? Uh, yeah. So basically, remember, this process is short. It can take anything between 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Sure. You're giving of your time. Um, you're coming. You're trusting us. The amazing thing about it is that amount of time you are managing to save three lives with your one donation sure. each time you come. And it's not just luck, like it's a life. You're saving a mum, you're preserving memories, you're giving somebody the opportunity to walk their daughter down the aisle, someone a chance to graduate. So yeah, you guys are really special people and we encourage you to continue donating. And if you haven't donated, consider donating provided you meet the eligibility criteria. Thank you so much for joining us, Davy. Thank and, you. And schooling us on the... On the Anytime. Art of you the... can call me Teacher Davy. <laughs> teacher Davy. <laughs> Mrs. Davy. Sounds like detection. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's episode of OK, Let's Talk. Hashtag Blood Matters. Teacher Davy, thank you for educating us <laughs> on Pleasure. Blood Nations. And if you're healthy and are between the ages of 16 and 75, we'd like to encourage you to consider donating or actually just donate. From our side, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and actually follow us on Official Sandbus on the YouTube channel. From the rest of us, we are wishing you a very good evening or day, depending wherever you are, and goodbye from our side. 